Good morning. So glad to see you here this morning as we get together and celebrate the wonderful day of Pentecost. As, as we hear about the event of Pentecost, as the Holy Spirit was poured out on the people, that we hear of the rushing wind and the tongues of fire and the disciples speaking in tongues, it's a great and magnificent day. Also just as great and magnificent is the vision that God gave to Ezekiel. And we're going to see how that vision of Ezekiel connects with the day of Pentecost as we hear about how the Spirit creates life. That is the theme for our sermon today. We begin with today's opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner.
Heavenly Father has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. He led me all around them. There were a great many of them on the surface of the valley, and they were very dry. Then he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? I replied, Lord God, only you know. He said to me, Prophesy concerning these bones, and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord God says to these bones. I will cause the breath to enter you, and you will live. I will put tendons on you, make flesh grow on you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, so that you come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. While I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. As I looked, tendons appeared on them. Flesh grew, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. He said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man. Say to it, This is what the Lord God says. 
Breath, come from the four winds and breathe into these slain so that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Look how they say our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Lord God says. I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them, my people, and lead you into the land of Israel. You will know that I am the Lord, my people, when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it. This is the declaration of the Lord, the word of the Lord. We now sing Psalm 51b. when the Holy Spirit was poured out powerfully on the people. The second lesson is Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthenians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, 
Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own languages. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what happened by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Out of joy and anticipation for the gospel, please stay. Alleluia! Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia! The Gospel according to the book of John, chapter 14. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We confess together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, who God not made, of one being with the Father, drew him all things for me. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with singing hymn 176.
mercy and peace are yours in abundance through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your Christian friends. When's the last time you remembered a dream? If you're like me, it's been quite some time. Now, apparently everyone dreams every night, but you don't always remember them. But thinking back to my last dream I had, you know, I remember a few things about it. I know that it was really bizarre. Things happened out of sequence. It was maybe loosely based on things I witnessed throughout the day, like maybe books I read or a show I was watching. But they were all out of my own imagination. There's no story or plot or message it was trying to give me. Well, today we see that there's a difference between the dreams we have at night and the visions that God gave to his prophets. While the dreams we have at night come from our own imagination, our own thoughts, without any message, the visions that God gave to his prophets were from the Almighty God who knew all things, giving them a message that will come true. So today we get to see one of those visions, a vision that God gave to his prophet, Ezekiel. And in that vision, we get the clear message, the clear message that the Spirit creates life. Even though all things might seem hopeless, God gives us life. Whenever we consider any portion of God's Word, we got to remember that it takes place in a greater context, that there's the historical setting as well as where it takes place within the, the book. So, in the, at the time of Ezekiel, the people were living in captivity in Babylon. In captivity, the people were holding on to some ounce of hope. They had hope because the temple was still standing and Jerusalem was still there. But notice that their hope was clinging on to created things rather than the one preserving those things, the almighty, powerful God. And so God gave to his prophet Ezekiel this message of destruction and condemnation. It's not maybe what we were expecting as God's people were in captivity, but it was the message that they needed to hear. So this is the message in the first half of the book of Ezekiel. In the second half, we hear a message of hope and restoration once the temple and Jerusalem were destroyed. And it's in this message of hope and restoration where this vision comes in. And what an amazing vision it was. Picture for a moment being in Ezekiel's shoes. God has Ezekiel flying over this enormous valley. And in this valley, it is just full of bones. And these bones, Ezekiel points us out to us, are dry. Very dry. There's no life in them whatsoever. These bones must have been here forever. But then God asks the surprising question, Son of man, can these bones live? Have you heard the saying, there's no such thing as a dumb question? I know that this saying exists because teachers want their students to ask questions. And I personally love questions. I love getting questions as I'm teaching confirmation or Bible study, or as people are reading through their Bibles and they come up with questions. But thinking back to my time in elementary school and high school, sitting in class, I think I would consider some of my classmates, I would accuse them of asking a dumb question. Like, did they actually listen to what just came out of their mouth? You get questions from students that almost are like, what's the number for 911? Well, here in God's word, we might be tempted to accuse God of asking a dumb question. Ezekiel just pointed out to us that these bones are very dry. There's no life in them. This valley is dead. But then God still asks, Son of man, can these bones live? God had a purpose for asking this question. There's no way that we can use God and dumb in the same sentence. God wanted Ezekiel to think. And he also wants us to think. So let's ask ourselves the same question. Can these bones live? 
The bones that God was talking about, we hear later on, is describing the house of Israel. It seemed like all hope was gone. The temple was destroyed. Jerusalem was gone. There's no hope left. Well, today we almost seem to live in a hopeless world. What is it that seems hopeless to you? Is there something that seems so insurmountable that it can't be fixed? Are you falling way behind on your finances and it seems like you can't keep up? Or maybe you're suffering from some sort of illness or disease that just never seems to go away. Or possibly it's that your relationships with your family or friends are so strained, it seems like nothing's going to fix them. When we find ourselves in this situation, where do we turn? We look to the professionals, right? For our finances, we turn to accountants. For anything health-related, we turn to our doctors. For our relationships, we might turn to a counselor. Well, these are great things that God gives us to help us out in our daily struggles. But more often than not, do we find ourselves turning to these people and trusting in them without even giving a thought to our Almighty God who watches out for us and protects us. When we're like this, it's no different than the Israelites who turn to the Temple and Jerusalem for their hope and their trust. When they turn to created things, God sent them into exile, away from Israel, into Babylon. If we get what we deserve for trusting in the people rather than the Almighty God who watches out over us, we deserve exile. Exile from heaven, exile from God, into hell forever. But God doesn't end this vision with this question, where it just seems like all hope is lost. Ezekiel doesn't just say, no God, these bones can't live, and the vision ends. But instead, let's listen to Ezekiel's answer. He said, Lord God, only you know. Only you know. God is almighty and over all things and is in charge of everything. He knows what will happen. Lord God is the only one who knows. So it's right to put our trust and faith in him. Only you know. And God doesn't just respond with just some helpful words, some encouragement by saying, it might be all right, but instead, it's interesting. He gives Ezekiel a command. He says, prophesy. Prophesy, son of man, to these bones. He tells him to prophesy that the bones come together, that tendons and ligaments and flesh appears, and that the breath of life is breathed into these people. You can picture it now, can't you? You hear Ezekiel prophesy. The whole valley begins rattling. Bone and bone connect. Ligaments and tendons appear. You start to see organs and flesh. Suddenly, an entire person is standing before you. But they're not breathing yet. And so you hear Ezekiel prophesying again. And you hear some wind rushing around. And then these people come to life. It's a living, breathing army. How amazing. There's something interesting to take note of here. So the words for spirit, breath, and wind all come from one Hebrew word. There's only one Hebrew word for all of these things, and that's ruach. And so we see here God's spirit, God's ruach commanded Ezekiel to prophesy to the four winds, the four ruachs, to breathe the breath, the ruach of life, into the people that they may live. All of these things are all connected. It has this idea of life. And as we saw that these dry bones stood for the house of Israel, their bones aren't dried up. They aren't without hope. But God gives them life. There's this living hope that they have. They can trust in the promises that God gives them. That they will, the promise that God gave is that they will return 
back to Israel. They have a hope that God will continue watching over them and protecting them. We also have a living and active hope. Our bones are no longer dry, but we have a living hope, a faith that trusts in God. The only way that we have this faith is that the Holy Spirit works whenever God's word is proclaimed or read. He works through this word to create faith in our hearts that we can now trust in God's promises, trust in all of God's promises, including those promises that he has removed our guilt forever. That it is in his dear son, that dear son who died on the cross, that he has removed our sins forever. We can trust in God. Trust that our sins are gone. Trust that he will watch over us. Trust that he will keep all of his promises. It's pretty interesting when we take a look at the vision that he gives Ezekiel. At times, I've always wished that God would give visions like this to me. How cool it would be to look out over this great valley to see these dry bones come to life. How amazing. Well, guess what? We've seen something more amazing. The amazing thing is the breath of life that God gives to us through his word. He breathes life into us that we trust in his promises. He also breathed the breath of life into us through the waters of baptism. As he used the word and water to breathe that breath of life, to create life in our dry bones. And he continues to increase that breath of life. Not only when we continue hearing God's word, but he strengthens that breath of life whenever we receive Christ's body and blood to eat and drink in the Lord's Supper. God gives us life. That out of these dry bones, he creates life. Now, you might be thinking that I forgot something very important. At the beginning of the service, I introduced that today we're celebrating Pentecost, this great and wonderful day where we see tongues of fire and a rushing wind, and we see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit as Jesus' disciples are speaking in tongues. But what does Pentecost have to do with this vision from Ezekiel? Well, one interesting connection I noticed is that we heard about the sound of a rushing wind in, at the day of Pentecost, where when the Holy Spirit came and there was tongues of fire, there was the sound of a rushing wind. And in the vision of Ezekiel, God commands Ezekiel to prophesy to the four winds to breathe the breath of life into people on the day of Pentecost, the breath of life was breathed into people, that they would take hold of God's promises. And this happened as the disciples were speaking in the language that they could understand. The Holy Spirit worked through that preaching, worked to create trust and hope, holding on to God's promises, understanding what it means that Jesus came to live a perfect life in this world, to die on the cross, and to rise again. That this was for them, this is the promise that they can hold on to, knowing that they will be in heaven with God. This is this living and active hope that was there on Pentecost. As they also had a living and active hope in the time of Ezekiel, looking forward to the coming of Jesus. And we have a living and active hope the same way that they do. That the Holy Spirit breathed the breath of life into us as we heard God's word, as we were baptized, as we received Christ's body and blood to eat and to drink, we can trust in God's promises. So having that living and active hope, we don't need to live in fear and worry about what will happen tomorrow or the next day, because God has breathed into us a living and active hope, knowing the promises of our Savior, Knowing that Jesus came and took away our sins, this came because of that living hope that was breathed into us. The Spirit creates life. All hope may, may have seemed all dead and gone, 
as hopeless as the dry bones we saw in Ezekiel's vision. But we know that these dry bones aren't dead, but God creates life into them as he breathes into us the breath of life when we hear God's word. Continue in trusting in those promises as you know that you have that breath of life. Amen. Please stand for the created me. Unite us by your spirit of truth in faith and confession, and comfort us with the knowledge that this world's prince is just. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, through your Son, you promised your Holy Spirit, who would convince the world of sin, sin, of righteousness and of judgment. Enlighten our hearts so that we can we confess our sins. Obtain everlasting righteousness through faith in Christ, and through every trial and temptation, abide in the consolation that Christ is Lord over the devil, death, and all things, and that he will graciously deliver us from all affliction, to make us partakers of eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join in the Lord's prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us down into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for the closing hymn.
welcome to everyone this morning and a well, warm welcome to everyone joining us on online. Thanks for joining us and hearing about that wonderful day of Pentecost and that same message which is true in the vision of Ezekiel, which is true at the time of Pentecost, is also true for us, that the Spirit creates life. Uh, I, as you noticed as you walked in today, uh, there, there weren't the green sheets on the pews, but rather in the bulletin. So I encourage you, please, to make sure that you fill that out uh, so that uh, it's an, an opportunity for us to uh, see uh, any prayer requests or also um, just to see uh, who's, who's here. So thanks for filling that out. Uh, if you're watching online, if you could please fill out the communication cards, that's helpful for us as we are then better able to know how we can best serve you in the best way possible. Um, so, uh, just a, a second note is that uh, Bible 101 class will be starting on June 7th at 5.30 p.m. So it'll be starting that day and the following Monday. So if you, uh, you or someone you know would like to join us for that, uh, I invite you to invite anyone you know and uh, it'll be a good time as we sit down and study God's Word uh, and to review what God has to say for us. That's all the announcements I have today. God's blessings on your day.